We are live. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to CodeJoy. CodeJoy is kind of like a live TV show where you can interact with the host. It's also kind of like a classroom that you can join from anywhere. We learn science, we do making, we learn coding, and I can't wait to see you in class. Welcome to CodeJoy. Hello, my name is Kelsey, I and I am the teacher. lead teacher and the host of Code Joy. And this is Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hello. Matt is, <laughs> Matt is our director and producer. And Matt is also going to help us manage all of the comments that people might make, either here in the Zoom classroom, or if you're tuning in live on Facebook or YouTube or any of the places that we're streaming to, you can also. Um, uh, ask a comment or leave a uh, ask a question or leave a comment there and Matt will let me know so that we can do that live. So make sure you participate there as well. I'd also love to introduce Jillian. So we're going to go up and spotlight Jillian up there and unmute you so that you can talk. And um, Jillian is from Family Maker Camp. And uh, tell us a little bit about Family Maker Camp, Jillian. Yeah, well, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm from Make Community, and we are really excited to be producing and working with different partners and collaborators, such as CoJoy, to put on Family Maker Camp. While we're all at home right now, we thought it would be a great time to make together. Um, so <laughs> we're roping in our families, and really thank you for joining us. Make uh, Family Maker Camp is brought to you by our members of Make.co. So to learn more about us, please do go to www.make.co. Thank you for joining. Awesome. Joy. Great. Well, we're actually going to go to gallery mode right now because I'd love to meet some of the people who are live with us in our Code Joy class. So if you would tell us your name. And then, because we're going to be learning about bugs today, tell us a favorite memory you have with bugs. For example, my name's Kelsey, and I remember that on my playground when I was a kid at my elementary school, there was a perfect place to find roly polies. It was like right up by the second grade door. There was always like mm, prime roly poly territory there. So remember how to raise your hand here in Code Joy class. Raise your hand by wiggling your hand in front of the camera if you'd like to introduce yourself. All right, let's go up to Samantha and Lauren. Um, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? I'm Lauren. Lauren. I'm starting. And I used to have a pet cricket. You used to have a pet cricket? Yeah. Oh, you about your cockroach. What was your pet cricket's name? Oh, yeah. Madagascar. I've seen cockroaches. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Let's go back to gallery view and see who else would like to introduce themselves. So raise your hand like this. Who else would like to introduce themselves? How about you, Cora and Leanna? You guys can unmute yourselves now. There we go. We're working on it. And Adam's here. You can let him in. All right. All there we go. What's a favorite memory you have with a bug? Mm. My favorite memory is when I had that funny memory about my sister when um she was digging in the dirt with me and she found a bug and I said, "Oh, cool! It's a ladybug." And she was like, "A ladybug?" And she was like, "Like um, a ladybug?" And then it suddenly flew away and she screamed so loud. <laughs> it didn't just it didn't surprise you to see that yeah. fly. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's a good memory. That's a good memory. Let's go back to gallery view. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? I'd love one more person. How about you, Allie? Let's go down to you, Allie. And make sure, yeah, you're unmuted. That's great. And tell us a favorite memory you have with a bug. Uh, my favorite memory that I had with a bug is when me and my mom were working in the garden and there was like a praying mantis the size of my hand. Knew it. Knew you were going to say praying mantis. <laughs> uh, that is a perfect segue, actually, because I want uh, someone else to introduce themselves. I'll kind of start you off. This is Adam, everybody. Adam is going to be our co-teacher and co-host today. And Adam, you're out in California, right? I am out in California. It is really sunny and nice where I am right right now. Um, Listen, Adam, stop rubbing it in. I'm in Pittsburgh. I haven't seen the sun in six weeks. <laughs> oh, here. Let, let me show it to you, Kelsey. 
Oh, thank you, Adam. That's so nice of you. Ah, sure. That's beautiful. I'm not jealous. I'm just happy for you. This is great. <laughs> so, Adam, you are a middle school science teacher and uh -huh. you're a bug scientist. Uh -huh. And you used to host a television show on PBS called Bug Bites, right? <clears throat> That's correct. I do like insects. Yeah. Like insects. Um, mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite mm -hmm. insect? My favorite insect is ants. Ants. Re I'm really into them? them. I've been studying them my whole life. You've been studying ants your whole life. What was one of the first things that you like learned about ants that you were like, yep, ants are my jam? So one of the coolest things about ants, I think, is that um, you can find an, an ant for almost any of the things that uh, people do to survive. Ants also do. You know, there are ants that uh, raise other insects as cattle. There are ants that grow their own food. There are ants that make other ants do all their work for them. Um, it's just it's so cool. I love their complexity, complexity. and, and what they can cool. tell us about so, patterns. I had heard that on an NPR story recently that ants do farming, that that ants actually grow plants and ants do sort of like livestock, like they, they farm other littler bugs and they kind of like we uh -huh. do with cattle. Uh -huh. So they ants do that too? Mm -hmm. What are you, wait, hold on. What are you doing right now, Adam? This is um, some honeycomb from a bee's nest over there. Just follow the spoon like that way. Uh huh. And um, <laughs> the, the spoon dripping with honey. Yeah, and so uh, we uh, took out a honeycomb. My friend did, and um, we've just been eating it with a spoon. And um, it's really, I mean, it's really sweet and nice because of all the honey. But then what happens is like, see all those little cells? Cells. Um, uh, you eat them and then uh, they become like a become like a, a ball of just wax that you just chew on for a while and it's kind of fun to just chew on and then you spit it out. Um, let's go to gallery view for a second because I have a million questions about this honeycomb. We're going to spend some time with Adam just exploring his garden and exploring kind of where he is but do you guys have any questions for Adam? Looks like you do Lowen. What's your question for Adam? Oh you're going to tell about your your yeah, you're you're unmuted. We can hear you. What's your question? Oh well, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to, just wanted to say my favorite memory. You wanna, yes, tell me your favorite mm. memory with a bug. Mm. Because, because we used to have Madagascar cockroaches. Oh my gosh! Oh, you those did. Are so cool. Did. Can, tell us really just cool. a little bit about Madagascar cockroaches. What is special about Madagascar cockroaches, Lowen? They hiss. Yeah. I used to work at a zoo and I was trained to work with Madagascar hissing cockroaches. They're pretty, they're pretty weird and interesting. We always got the, we always got the old one to show to the kids. Cause I would, I would teach the kids and show them the bugs. And we always got the oldest one because they were like jumpy <laughs> and they would hiss the most, which was fun. That's cool. Does anybody have any questions for Adam, maybe about his honeycomb? about what it tastes like, about where you can find it, anything like that. What's your question, Kimber? Go ahead, you're unmuted. Um, uh, is it like honey better than store-bought honey? Like, does it taste better than store-bought honey? It does. Um, uh, it tastes uh, richer. It's almost like it has, like it has more, taste more taste than some store-bought honey. But honey. to be honest, it tastes honest. a lot just like other store-bought store honey. It's just got more stuff in it. It's got more stuff in it. It's got more stuff Here's in it. a bee now. A and bee now. Actually, yeah. actually, we have a pretty good opportunity. Um, you guys called it a really good time because my friend Rob, who pulled out um, the honeycomb, got a bee sting in his head. And he's been very patiently waiting for us because um, I thought it might be a fun uh, learning thing to just see a bee sting. Um, this is Rob right here. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Sorry that Rob you had to a, wait a, with a bee sting on your head. <laughs> <laughs> she said, sorry that you had to wait with a bee sting on your head. It's okay. It's not that big. Do, do you want to make you, that part you of our show today? today? Yes. Uh, I don't want to keep Rob waiting, okay. though. So cool. let's cool. take a look at how do you guys feel about that? If you're, if you're down to look at a bee sting, give me a thumbs up. 
or if you're a little bit iffy, you can do this. Okay. Uh, we got mostly thumbs, a couple men, but we're good. Uh, there's no looks of absolute horror. So let's take a look at your bee sting, Rob. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, folks, so let's take a look at this. Where should we do this? Uh, outside? Okay. <laughs> All right, doctor. I like being outside. Right, your sunshine is much better than my Pittsburgh clouds. This is great. <laughs> so is, is Rob awesome. a beekeeper? Is he a bee farmer person? Rob, Rob is, what's that? My spoon is the one on the far right. Um, <laughs> good. Rob not is, um, this is good. yeah, we're not sharing spoons. Um, <laughs> Rob is actually um, in, uh, in tech and he just has an awesome place up here with, um, you know, that sort of works on uh, being more and more self-sufficient. So. That's cool. So Rob has a has a regular old job somewhere, but then I also keep I That's right. That's right. That's cool. All right, let's take a look. Can we take a look at that bee sting? I was promised we're weirdness. gonna take we're gonna take we're gonna take a look right now, everyone. I appreciate you guys uh, going with the flow on this. All right. Yeah. Oh man. <gasps> so. Whoa. I see a lot of hair. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. And then okay. I see a hair that looks kind of darker. Oh. So that right there, that? That right there, is a bee sting, bee sting that has pierced the skin on Rob's head. Rob's head. You can see that tiny, tiny bit of blood right there. Blood right there. Um. Uh huh. And then uh, you can yeah. you, the bee sting is attached to a venom sack that is pumping more venom, more venom. into the wound. That's why. You should remove it quickly after you get stung. <laughs> you know, the opposite of what we just did to Rob. So sorry, Rob. <laughs> this is for science, though, and we really appreciate it. With you. Very <laughs> <heartily. Thank> you. <laughs> so, All right. so how do you All take right. it out? Do you need like fire or tweezers or it looks like Lowen has a question, too. Let's go to you, Lowen. What's your question? Oh, I've actually got stung by a bee once. You did. You got. Let's go to gallery mode for a second. Oh, he's gonna take it out. Ooh, that seemed easier than I thought it would be. There it is. There it is. There it is. Let's see. Does it hurt less now, Rob, or does it hurt the same? Rob, does it hurt less or about the same? Uh, about the same right now, but I'm really thankful that it's out. I'm thankful to David here uh, for uh, operating on a part of my head that I cannot see. <laughs> yeah, and are you pretty mad at Adam for making you keep it in your head? <laughs> are, are you mad at me for making you keep it in your head? No, not at all. I, I, okay. All for science. All for science. You guys have a cool and weird friendship. I like it. Um, <laughs> cool. And honey, and honey. Um, so let me get a quick show of hands. Raise your hand like I showed you. If you've been stung by a bee before, have you been stung by a bee before? I have not. Who is, oh man, about half of the people here have been stung by a bee. Give me a number, zero through 10, how much did it hurt? Like 10 is the most anything's ever hurt in your life. Zero is like, no. Oh man, Kenji says 1 million. Ali says a very reasonable seven. Lauren says one. Yeah, okay. Kevin says about a five. I wonder if, um, what did you say, Cora? What number did you say? I didn't say, I didn't say, didn't say, a, number. say a number. Oh, did you get stung by a bee? No, I, I had a pet egg before. A pet, you a pet, a, a real pet egg. That, that, oh. that egg? A, that that for real belongs to bird and a baby that you had a pet egg that was really from a bird that's really cool i like that it was well from let's i want to go back to adam for a second because um i, I want to investigate legs i'm really interested in bug legs and i wonder if you can go find some bug legs for us to have a peep at and let me show you why if we can come back to me for a second let me show you why i want to take a look at bug legs because I made what I think is a pretty dope stick bug. Um, the stick bug, as I pull on these strings down here with my thumbs, its legs actually move. Let's take a look at how 
that works. If I turn it upside down, you can see how these legs work. There's some straws and some string. And as I pull on the string back here, it bends the cardboard there. So it bends the leg. So that's actually what we're gonna be making today too. We're gonna find some bugs to investigate and then we are gonna make some bug legs like this. So if you are joining us on Zoom or if you're joining us live somewhere, I want you to gather some supplies. So let me show you how these things fit in. You'll need some cardboard for the legs and you can actually just, we're actually gonna make something that looks kind of like this. We're just gonna make skinny little legs like this. So you'll need some cardboard. You'll need some string like so. You'll need some um, straws as well. We're gonna cut those straws up. So you'll need some string straws, cardboard. You'll also need some scissors and some tape. Um, you could also use hot glue. You could also use a blade if you wanna use a blade. But if you're using a blade, be really careful, number one. And also use a cutting mat, number two, so that if you cut with your blade, you don't accidentally cut through to your dining room table because you will get in trouble and I will get in trouble and I don't want that for either of us. All right, make that safe, great. So the other thing, the rubber bands and the paper clips, those I didn't actually use on this one. You may not need them. Those kind of can help it spring back up when it's done. You may need them or you may not. If you don't have rubber bands and paper clips, that's okay. But you definitely need cardboard, straws, string, scissors, and tape. And then the pipe cleaner, that's actually gonna to be to help us thread it through. So you could use a pipe cleaner, which is like this little fuzzy thing with wire on the inside, or you could use like a twist tie. Um, you can go steal it from your loaf of bread if you need to. Um, you, can do the, you can do the twist the bread and set it on the opening of the package method. I used to get in trouble for that, but this is for science. Rob got stung by a yeah. bee, you guys. You can steal your bread tie is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so gather these supplies. What was that, Matt? Oh. All right, so gather these supplies and we're actually gonna start out, we're gonna start building this a little bit. It's um, good. Yes. Is this enough cardboard or is that too much? Uh, it's not too much. That's actually a really good size of cardboard. I've got, you can use cardboard like this, like you can use like a cardboard box if you want, like a skinny. You used a that skinny earlier. Kind of flim yeah, you can use a skinny flimsy box or you can also you use, we do have one like that, that one's good too yeah you'll want your piece of cardboard to be about maybe at least the length of your hand if not like twice as long as your hand so i'm i'm gonna use this right here so i'll put my hands in here so you can see how long it's gonna be but you want it to be maybe six inches long all right so gather those supplies and while you do i want to go check in on adam oh we have a quick question here from kimber what's your question kimber are the straws like really required or can you do it a different way no, that's a great question. If you don't have straws, you can also cut little pieces of cardboard and kind of make a little tent because it's just something to guide the string on there. So if you don't have straws, you can use an extra piece of cardboard. So we're going to make this together starting in just a minute. Actually, the very first step, which we can do while we go check in with Adam, the very first step is going to be to cut two long strips of cardboard. Is this great? Right? Is like, this great? Let's take a look, Cora and Leanna. Let's hold it up. Let me see. Yeah, that's great. You're going to cut two long strips of cardboard like that. So I'm going to do that with mine. Great. And then let's go check in with Adam. Adam, have you found any bugs with legs yet? So we're not looking for worms today. We're looking for bugs with legs. We're not looking at worms. Not looking for worms today, mister. You find any bugs with legs? You know what I think I have? Let me take a look around. I found a bush where there's likely to be some bugs with legs. Um, sometimes things camouflage on uh, shrubs uh -huh. like this. Uh huh. Uh, things what that try to look like mean? sticks or leaves. Or... What does camouflage mean? Does anybody here know? If you know what camouflage means, yeah, Lowen, what does camouflage mean? It means blending in with a, a object. Perfect. Yep, oh, camouflage means blending in. That's great. All right, Adam. What are what kind of bush are we in right now? It looks real pokey. Excuse me. This on to me. This guy. a little bit of lavender. Got a little bit of lavender there. That's kind of cool. 
I think I I've fallen so. in a lavender bush when I was on a hike once. And are, are, are lavender bushes prickly? Do I remember that right? <laughs> uh, not too bad. A little bad. I mean, if you were to fall on one, it'd be pretty bad. <laughs> I'm not You'd a very good a hiker. So that's part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, a, I'm a, yeah. If I just, somebody just gave a great definition of camouflage and I, it's hard for me to see if there's anything on this bush, because if it were, it would be really well camouflaged. <laughs> but if there is anything, maybe somebody can see it. Uh, anybody seeing anything? Anybody seeing anything that looks like it may oh. be something other than a stick? Uh, was that something maybe, dark? Maybe I'll root something? around here. Was that something? Oh, what, yeah. This? That thing in the middle there, is that something? Uh, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I think that's probably just a stick, right? No. I don't dude, know. Maybe dude, I'll that's give it a, a thing. Little... Really? Give it a poke. Here, let me. Yeah, poke it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Sticks don't move like that, Adam. Whoa. That is a thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Does anybody Sticks, know what that this. thing is? That's wild. It's like, I'm, I don't know like what that is. <laughs> what is it? Uh, let's go to a Is Viva. it a stick bug? Yeah. Is it a stick Wait, bug? Um, yeah. It sure is. It's a stick insect. <gasps> hey, sticky. Hey, girl. How you doing? <laughs> Look at this thing. See what it's she does? It's a stick bug. It's a stick bug. That is awesome. Can you see how her kind of like how her yeah. arm? Oh, that's what she does during the day. She just can you holds say that one more time, Adam? This... Sure. Can you talk about and what I her am arms so do during sorry the day? If I no, no, you're fine. Uh, the audio just cut Absolutely. out for a second. So you were saying what the stick bugs do with their arms during the day. So what they do with their arms during the is, um, let's see, where'd she go? Here she is, right? Is that her? Mm. She's pretty good at blending. Finding, in. finding. Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay. Great. So what she does is um, she holds her front arms out in front of her like the, uh, I just bent it, but she see how yeah. she's moving it back straight? She keeps it out uh -huh. like that the entire day. And in a minute, she's so does she hold them out? One. Does she hold them out in front of her like a zombie, like or like up top like that? So she holds them out more um, up top, like what you just said, kind of straight up like that, and kind of looks forward like that. And uh -huh. Spends all day uh -huh. sort of asleep like that, and only starts moving at night to eat leaves. Uh, can we go to gallery view? Can you guys show me your best impersonation of a stick bug? You would stick your arms right up, just like this, and you'd look up like that. Look at us, we are stick bugs. This is great. Great stick bugging, <laughs> everyone. This is wonderful. Okay, so let's check in on our maker project here for a second. So does everybody have two strips of cardboard, like so? They might be longer, they might be shorter, they might be wider, they might be skinnier, that's okay. We're gonna turn these into some bug legs and we're gonna hopefully investigate some of those stick bug legs or some other bug legs soon. But the next thing we need to do if we check in on our example here is we gotta bend it. So we're gonna bend it into four sections, like top, nah, nah, nah. And you wanna make them pretty even. So I'm gonna make my top one, eh, that's a little short, but that's okay. I'm gonna give that a second bend and then a third bend. So you want three folds in your leg and uh, so that it folds into four sections. So bend each of your legs so that it's got three bends in it, like so. And now, all right, this is starting, this is starting to look like something, all right. Because then the next part, we're gonna do two, two things right in a row and then we're gonna check back in with Adam, see what other kind of bugs we found. The next thing we need to do is at the top, and I'm gonna label the top and bottom. You don't need to label the top and bottom of yours, but I think that that'll just make it easy for us to, to try. So I've got the top and the bottom of my leg. So this is gonna be the top, this is gonna be the bottom. And at the top, 
you need to make a cut, not all the way down to the bend. So leave some space there, but make a little snip in the top of your thing. We're gonna make just a little snip. You can do it with your scissors or your blade, whatever you've got. Make a little snip there so that you know that's the top now. There we go, like so. I don't have anything. I'll, you don't have what? I, my, my mom, uh, mommy, can you cut top? Having some trouble cutting your legs? There you go, you've got one. One's working. You'll, you'll just work on cutting two strips of cardboard like that. So then this next part that you'll need to spend a little time on while we go check in with Adam involves the straw. So if you've got a straw, you're gonna cut your straw into little sections. So you'll have a cut there, you'll have one there, you'll have one there, and you'll have one there. So I'm gonna grab my scissors and you can cut your straw and tape it on. Or like Kimber pointed out, you can cut your straw and where'd my tape go? Whoa. Oh. I, I, I'm using staples. Oh. Uh, <laughs> got our tape here. And you can cut your straw and tape it on like so. Oh, my tape is too wide. I need to cut my tape down. There we go. Cut your straw and tape it right onto your project right underneath that little slit. So the very top one's gonna to be real shrimpy, really short. But then all the other ones under that, you'll cut them so they fit inside the bend. So like there's one, probably wanna snip that down just a little bit. And as you go, as you bend your cardboard, you can make sure they don't hit each other. So you're gonna tape a little section of straw onto each one of those, or if you don't have, I'm gonna cut that, cut this. If you don't have a straw, this is where some extra cardboard can come into play because you can cut a little piece of cardboard and then just kind of bend it into a little kind of semicircle or a little tent. And so you could also tape that on if you don't have a straw, you can just tape on a little bit extra cardboard because our string is going to go through there. So you could also- What I did is I kind of made like the flat end so you can staple it or tape it on kind of on the bottom. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay. That's great. So you made yours like a little, like a little camping tent kind of. Yeah, that works great too. Great job, Kimber. All right, let's go check in with Adam. So as we, as you put some straws or some cardboard on each section, we're going to check in with Adam. Did you find anything cool out there, Adam? Oh, we're going to unmute you so we can hear you one second. <clears throat> Up over on the side. Check, check, nope. check. There we go. Gotcha. Check, check, check. Okay. We cool. can hear you now. <laughs> well, so I've been looking around in the garden and I, I think I did find something kind of cool, actually. Um, let me just do a quick check in back to our stick insect over here. I kind of can't believe can you how guys see that? big it is. Yeah. It looks Here like is, the uh, body is like three hand. or four inches have... long. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's um from here up to there is like I don't know, at least at least four, I would say. And then all the way up to this point right here when she does that, I don't know, probably at least six. But anyhow. Do do stick insects live all over? Um, there are stick insects in most of the world, most of the uh, tropical and temperate parts of the world. So, um, tropical being what really usually hot and humid, and temperate having a hot season and a cold season. Both of those mm. areas have stick insects. Cool, check out this. What's this? What? Can you see anything there? I don't know. I think I see something. Think you see something? Is it, a, is it another stick bug? Yeah. Ah. Oh, this one's a different color. That's why I thought you guys would think it was interesting. Yeah. 
this one kind of looks like it's a similar color to the plant that it's on. I forget what, was it a heather plant you said? That was, I think this is lavender. Lavender, that's right. Yeah. Can you guys see that? Kind of, it's a little bit blurry, but yeah. Oh, I think I see like the little knots. It kind of looks like knots in a tree, but those are the eyes. <laughs> yes, yes. Can you, is it, is it safe to pick up a stick bug? With your bug body? Okay. Absolutely. The, the most dangerous part of about picking up a stick is to, is, um, to the insect itself because they're so delicate, but you will be oh. fine. Let's see if we can pick this one up. So it's safe for you. Is it safe for the stick? Okay, you're going to do it really gently though. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, now we can really see it. Oh, yeah. Hey there. Hi, friend. <laughs> see, see how she's putting her front leg straight out like that? You know, it kind All of, day. it kind of, yeah, <laughs> it kind of makes it look like she's only got four legs, but, uh, is it true that do all insects have six legs? Is that true? It's mostly true, but um, some insects lose legs during a metamorphosis. So um, as an insect like this stick insect will look the same its whole life. It will just be, get bigger and bigger and bigger. But something like a caterpillar, which changes into a different form of insect, um, Sometimes butterflies that come out, some species have six legs like other insects. Other species have four legs. They lose a pair of legs during metamorphosis. Ah. So they do and go then down you to have four. A, mm -hmm. They do go down to four. Um, then you have uh, other insects left that don't really have legs anymore. And then you have insects like caterpillars that have six main legs but then a body with a bunch of other leg-like things that help them walk around. So they start out with, with the six main legs and then, oh, I think I've seen that before that they have like some kind of like front grabby, grabbers. Pardon <laughs> Adam? Um, at the, that... mm, I, I am going to look for some spiders. I saw a neat looking jumping spider before. Um, I'm gonna, I'll do some prowling for spiders because they've got to be here somewhere. <laughs> All right, Adam's gonna go on the spider prowl, which is perfect because I bet <laughs> most of us have gotten about to this point with at least one of our legs. So even if you haven't finished both of them yet, you've probably gotten to this point with at least one of your legs so that I can show you the next step because to turn this into this, we need the string. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my string and something that uh, I think it was Aviva discovered before is that the string you use matters and that you want string that you can pull on that can stand a little bit of tension because if we can go to Aviva, if you want to unmute yourself, Aviva, you used some string one time that didn't work very well. Will you tell us about that string that didn't work? Oh, oh she's going to go grab it. <laughs> Just throw me under the bus. <laughs> Not you, Jillian, the string, the string. Uh -huh. So what, what about that string didn't work very well, Aviva? She gave me wax strings. So oh, yeah. And, and, and why didn't it work? Did it, what didn't work about it? It wasn't sticky. No. And I don't want you to use it. It was not what a good work wrong moment, but we got through it. <laughs> No, no, it wasn't a good string moment. It was like the, so the string on that one, it was just like a little bit too, um, it was a little bit too like stretchy and it broke, right? So that might be something that might happen to you eventually too, if you are building along with us at home. We don't call that failing, we call that engineering. <laughs> That's when you try something and it sure didn't work and you gotta try it again. <laughs> okay, so when you're grabbing your string, you'll wanna get a piece of string that's like pretty long. Here's my, Here's how long I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it twice as long as the leg 
You want more string than you're probably gonna need because it's really easy to make a string shorter. You just cut it. It's really hard to make a string longer. So this next part can be a little bit tricky, but that's what we have the pipe cleaner or the twist tie for. So the next part is you gotta feed your string, start at the bottom, and you gotta feed your string up through the straws. Now maybe you have a really easy time of it, and as you feed the string up through the straw, it just goes really nice and perfectly like that, and you don't have to work hard at it. But maybe that's not how it goes for you. <laughs> if that is not the case for you, let me show you what to do. So you get your, your pipe cleaner here, and you're gonna wrap your string around the pipe cleaner just a couple times, and then bend the pipe cleaner over to kind of pinch it in place. And then you're gonna shoot that pipe cleaner right up through all of your straws in one nice little motion there. It's gonna go through each of the straws. One, two, three, on to the final challenge, straw number four. There we go. Oh, it's getting a little clogged up. <laughs> Got it. Right up through the top there. So then once I get it out the top, I can unbend my pipe cleaner, unwind my string, and I'm gonna hold on to the string at the top while I pull the pipe, or I'm gonna hold on to it, I guess, on the bottom while I pull my pipe cleaner out on the top. So that's the next step, is to get your string all the way up through all of your straws. And once you do, this is the other kind of silly part, give yourself, give yourself a, lot of, a lot of extra string here and you're going to put the string through that little um, cut you made before. You're gonna wrap your string around and you're gonna put it through the cut again and then tape it down in the back. So let me show you how I did that again. I'll unwind it. So it's coming out through that top straw. All right. And then I'm gonna feed it. I'm gonna hold my string down so I don't accidentally pull it through and do all my hard work. Put it through the top wrap it around like one and a half times and then feed it back through that thing in the top and then tape it down so let's see while you guys work on that while we take a while we while we wrap our strings around and get them through the straws and everything let's check in on adam oh he found something what is that look at this guys uh-huh found a nice little spider over here hey mama Let's, um, oh, no. uh, Ooh, way to go. She, <laughs> oh, there it is. Wow. She thought that we were a bug in her web and she jumped to, to come and get us. Ah, um, <laughs> I think cool, you're a little huh? too, too big for her, Adam. I don't think, I don't think she can handle, <laughs> I don't think she can, she can take you. Uh, I know. I, I think she, she realized that? that and went back to the woods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is, I don't know what kind of spider this is. I need to look this up. That's a great question. Maybe, what are some common spiders that you find where you are? Um, common spiders that we'd find over here would be things like wolf spiders, water spiders, um, black widows, tarantulas. Ooh. Jumping spiders, lots of good jumping spiders around here. Do you have Crab a favorite kind of spider? Flowers. Um, gosh, that's such a good question. <laughs> you know, I um, I don't think I have a favorite kind of spider. I think black widows are really just sort of elegant and pretty, and so I like them. But um, I like lots of different kinds of spiders. Do you, I know, the only thing I know about black widows is that they're kind of dangerous. Uh, what's, do you want to tell people what's dangerous about black widows or, or what you love about them is how they look, right? Yes, I do. I, I like that a lot. And um, in Los Angeles, where I live, um, there's an introduced spider called a brown widow that, um, it's harmless to humans, but very aggressive towards black widows. And oh. um, it has slowly been taking over um, all of the black widows habitat, at least in the city and pushing it further and further away. And so on the one hand, people are happy that they're 
is less of a threat from Black Widows, which can be toxic. Uh, but mm -hmm. on the other hand, they're kind of watching a species get pushed out of its range. You know, maybe one question I have for you guys is, what do you think the right thing is in a situation like that? That is a really good question. We'll go to gallery view and just check in with people. So Adam was saying that there's a new species that was introduced, the brown widow, which is pushing the black widow out and like really aggressive towards it. So what do you guys think? Like what's, what, what do you guys think about that? Raise your hand if you want to. Is it still attached to the rest of it? You guys think that we should have, yeah. What do you think, Kenji? Well, no, I have a question. Does the brown widow have any natural predators? Great question. Um, my guess is that uh, it sort of falls through a loophole because it's in an introduced range. Um, so that eliminates a lot of predators potentially, predators potentially, but then do exist and would probably also prey on brown widows, but they would probably not venture into the city and are probably not as adapted to urban life as black widows are. So mm. at least within city limits, I could see brown widows sort of like continuing unchallenged um, in their new range. Yeah, that's good. Well, we, we actually had somebody, um, uh, I think this was uh, Aviva's dad maybe, uh, who thinks that the um, spider that we saw before is called a harvest man spider. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. So it wasn't Aviva's dad. We had somebody oh. in from YouTube who said, oh, yeah. I think it's a harvest man. Um, so I don't know if it is, but that's gotcha. what, what Andrew was saying. <laughs> I don't know what that audio was, but that was great. Um, <laughs> uh, so somebody, I guess somebody from YouTube uh, commented, Andrew, thanks, Andrew, thinks that it is a, uh, a harvest man spider. So thank you. That's a good, that's a good guess. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, I got to say that the most fun part about doing this is when everyone jumps in. So I really yeah. love that research and checking stuff out. That is what makes this the most fun. You, you <laughs> might be interested to know that um, harvest men actually refers to a class of arachnids that looks a lot like spiders, which people often call daddy long legs. And they're oh. those big things that you see walking around, but that don't make webs. Mm -hmm. um, so that, we know that was a spider uh, for one reason, because it made a web out of silk and a, a true harvestman would not be using silk, as far as I know, for any purpose. Mm. And it would be much more like the daddy long legs that you might be used to seeing walking around. That is really cool. So it, so harvestmen is like a class of bug you said that's not spiders, but people can mistake it for spiders. I remember daddy long legs, especially when I go camping. I feel like they're always everywhere when I go camping. And I was, is it true? I'd heard this before that daddy long legs do have teeth and they can bite, but their teeth are so small that they can't <clears throat> pierce our skin and bite humans. Is that true? So that's most, that's mostly true. Um, Daddy long legs have these tiny little uh, claw-like appendages by the front of the mouth and they, they're actually scavengers. They don't really kill other things. They pick apart uh, dead things and other little bits that they find tasty. And they kind of reach down with their claws and pick them up and they're far too weak to break human skin. There's also an urban legend that uh, daddy long legs have venom that's quite lethal, but yeah. um, they're harmless to humans because because they can't pierce human skin. And that's also not true to my knowledge for what that's okay. worth. Uh, I don't think there are any harvestmen anywhere with venom. That is good to know. So, I'd heard that, that uh, but story. But it looks a lot like a harvestman. Okay, yeah, that's, I, those, that was a whole thing I didn't know. I thought that daddy long legs were a type of spider, but they're not. I, I had heard the thing that they're like super venomous, but their teeth are too small to pierce human skin. Not venomous, they have more like, uh, uh, grabbers on the front, which is pretty cool. And it actually looks like some people are like me and they have finished their wow. cable mechanism for legs. Let's go to gallery view. And if you've got one of yours done, hold it up. I want to see it. I want to see it cabling. Hey, those look great. 
let's go to Samantha and Lauren. Let's check in on you guys. Yeah, looking good. Hold it up. Show it off. That is awesome. That's really cool. Nice work. Those look Close beautiful. Off. I think Allie had one that she, oh, here we go. So Man and Court, very cool. Looking good. Very ah. good. Allie, how about yours? So nice. Um, yeah. There's loud in the back, so I have to mute. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hold yours up. We want to see it. Yeah. Looking good. Great. Let's see Kevin's. Kevin's got a, a pretty great one. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. What'd you Looks use amazing. for the little things instead of straws? What'd you, what'd you put in there? They're straws. They're just oh. really, really small straws. Oh, I see. They're coffee that, stirrers. <laughs> they're coffee stirrer straws. I'm surprised you got your string through there. That's some very persistent yeah, work. Kevin. Nice job. Tricky. <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> Let's take a look at Kevin. Hi. <laughs> got some family on here today. That looks great, Kimber. Can you operate them both at the same time? You got to do one at a time. Yeah. That's Kimber, great. I love what you did amazing. with the cardboard. That's awesome. Do you know what else that does, does this movement, especially when we put it on its side? Ooh, Ke Kevin's doing them both at once. Let's check in on Kevin. That's pretty great. Kimber, <laughs> I, I like where you're going with that. That, wow. that's, pretty awesome. <laughs> that's wonderful. Like um, I was, I was going to ask if this so reminds good. anybody of anything. Cause um, when we, when I have it like this, this kind of reminds me of bug legs. And that's what I did here. I was modeling it after um, the stick bug that we saw before. Mm. Get over there. There we go. So I made little loops with some pipe cleaners on the end there, but I was modeling it on the stick stick bug and when it looks like this it kind of looks like legs but when you guys were doing it like this that reminded me of a kind of famous bug with a kind of famous tail that works like that does anybody know what those are what those are called does that remind anybody else of a bug scorpions scorpions it reminded yeah, me of a scorpion too i think they're onto something it reminds me of a scorpion too yeah so uh, what, do we, what do you know about scorpions that is interesting or terrifying? <laughs> they have, well, I know. Yeah, what do you guys know? What do uh, you know, Lowen? They have three types of sting, sting wings. Oh, yeah? Was that, what kind of sting? Well, they have one on their tail, I think, and two Maybe on their uh, one on their mouth, one on their mouth, and I forgot where the last one is. <laughs> what do you know about the dangerous parts of scorpions, Adam? Um, well, I can tell you right now that I don't know a lot more than I do, but um, <laughs> as, far, as far as I know, um, the tail definitely has venom, and some scorpions use their tails to hunt prey. Others use their tails mostly just for defense and use their claws to hunt prey. Do you guys uh, want to hear um, a crazy scorpion story that happened in our, in our lab this year? Yes. So um, there were these two scorpions that for, for years, I had them for years and I thought they were both boys. Um, and then all of a sudden during the middle of school, they both gave birth. Um, which suggested that they weren't boys. And uh, each one had like 20 to 30 baby scorpions. And soon we had baby scorpions everywhere. And um, we had this one giant tank. And I put a lot of uh, the baby scorpions in there. And there were, uh, we got some dart frogs, these beautiful, um, very colorful, tiny little gorgeous frogs, dart frogs. And uh, we put them in there and thought they would get along, but in no time, the scorpions ate all the frogs. Oh, That's my story. No. That's terrible. All of your little frogs got eaten by the forever multiplying scorpions. That's amazing. Yep. Uh, it actually so we, looks like we, we have a, a <laughs> comment too, coming in from somewhere. Oh, cool. What do we got, Matt? Well, a lot of people are commenting on Kevin's hat. Kevin, <laughs> your hat is famous. 
uh let's look at kevin's hat what is this hat that is so beautiful ah that is a great hat indeed yeah <laughs> can wear it like this can wear it like if i need if i need to hear someone better i can lift up a flap like this that reminds me of a basset hound and like, like what this. basset hounds do in the cartoons that's great <laughs> this maybe, is great maybe i should um put some straws on this and i can if i put some straws here i could pull it and make it yeah you could make a awesome. cable mechanism and pull pull your hat flaps up and down. That would be uh, a sight to see, friend. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, I've known I've known you long enough to know that I think you will do that. <laughs> That's great. Um, so I want to I want to go back to gallery view for a second because I would love for all of us who have our our legs done to hold them all up at the same time. Oh, Anna had a, or Allie had a quick question. Let's go to you, Allie. What was your question? Um, is it true that some scorpions can glow in the dark? Oh my gosh. So glad you asked that question. <laughs> yes. One of the best ways to find scorpions, we've got to do this. One of these classes will do this. Um, is you get a black light, like you know those kinds of lights that uh, arcades or aquarium that make your teeth glow white, shine like a Jimi Hendrix poster in a black light. <laughs> and uh, if you are outside at night and you turn on a black light and shine it around, anywhere there's a scorpion, there'll be this big glowing yellow green scorpion. It's incredible, it's amazing. Why? Why? <laughs> why? why? <laughs> so we think that the reason why um, this happens is because. Bye, Rob. See you later. Feel um, better. <laughs> we think that um, this helps the scorpion detect when part of its body is exposed to sun or moonlight. Um, its whole body acts as kind of an eye as a UV detector. And so this way, even in the, in the blackness where we wouldn't be able to see, um, a scorpion still needs to hide from nocturnal predators who can see at night. And uh, because its body is so sensitive to ultraviolet, it knows if moonlight is hitting part of its body and it knows to tuck it in a little deeper. So it, that helps it hide, that's awesome. I think Lowen had a question too. Let's go to you, Lowen, what was your question? So my mom, my mom uh -huh. has um, her hair and she has these things, these things that she, she has dreadlocks. Uh -huh. And when you shine a UV light on them, they glow. They glow when you shine a UV light on them? Yep. Oh my gosh, you're just like a that's scorpion. Awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Except that's real, that's great. I also work with fluorescence microscopy too. So really? that's pretty great. Technique. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go back to gallery awesome. view because we're almost out of time. And I'd love for everybody to hold up their cable me mechanisms all together and we'll show them all off at the same time. We'll all hold them up and wiggle them up. There we go. Very nice. Oh, Kenji's got a pretty good one too. That one's pretty great, Kenji. Yeah. These are great, everybody, because now what I want everybody to do, whether you are here on the Zoom call or whether you are um, out there joining us live from Facebook, is I want you to turn these things, which are the start of something, but not a full something yet, I want you to turn them into something. So I turned my two cable mechanisms into a, a stick bug. And so I put a couple, I'll go down to the top down so you can kind of see. I put some um, little pipe cleaners on the end here so it made them easier to pull. I gave it a body, I gave it some legs. I really like stick bug butts. So I made sure to give some, I like how they curl up when they're uh, into you. I don't quite know what curling up their butt means, but I like it. And <laughs> so, um, so I put that on there, gave it some legs. I gave him some cute eyes and some little antennas. So what I hope that you do now that you know how to make cable mechanisms is I want you to go finish it. We started a project here today, but I want you to go and finish it because I would really love to see what you guys all make. So what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to just kind of tell you, tell everybody some places that they can go and some things that they can do, especially on like social media and some websites and stuff. But before I do that, I want to say to Adam, thank you so much, Adam, for joining us. You know the most of anyone I've ever met about bugs and nature. And I'm so glad that you were here with us today. Thank you. It's a real treat to be with you today. Thanks. Yeah, you shared some sunshine with us. You shared some bugs. You shared some weird facts about scorpions. And you also shared a live bee sting removal, which was super strange. And I liked it a lot. Ooh, what's that? Cool. I'm glad you did. I just want to, you know, I like to end on a lizard. So here's Ooh. one right here. Hi, lizard. Wow. Bye, everyone. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye, lizard. Bye. <laughs> Before we go though, before everybody signs off, I do have a couple things I wanna share with you guys. So um, as, as you've probably noticed, we are Code Joy. So Matt and I, does anybody wanna say hi to Matt? Hi, Matt. Hello. <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for managing our comments for us and everything today. You did a really good job. No problem. <laughs> um, so we are Code Joy. So we do live teaching online and um, we like to do STEM. We like to do maker activities. We like to do coding. So you should definitely, if you haven't yet, check out our, no, not that website, <laughs> this website. I have so much cardboard. It's hard to keep track of. Go to codejoyedu.com to check us out. And if you liked what you saw here today, we do what we do totally for free. Um, we're not charging Family Maker Camp or anybody for the classes that we're providing. Um, and we're a pretty new business as well. So if you like what we're doing, we would really appreciate it if you would help us out and contribute to our tip jar, kind of like your waitress or your yoga instructor, or you could like give us an apple, except just via money. Um, or you could, um, you can also, there's ways to follow us on social media. So if you wanna help us like boost what we're doing, you can tag um, me, this is me on Twitter, at Kelsey Connects. You can tag Matt, who is also a real person, but is also a very cute robot. Um, you can also tag hashtag Code Joy uh, in your posts if you liked what you did, especially if you wanna show off the bug you made. I would love to see all of your bugs when they're done, post them on there. Um, or you can also tag Family Maker Camp, hashtag Make Together. So you can tag all your social media posts with some cool stuff. Um, but before we go, I'll send it over to Jillian one more time just so that she can say anything that she'd like to say. Thank you all so much for having us today. This was a blast. Yes, thank you for joining us. Again, um, Family Maker Camp is brought to you by the members of Make Community. So please go to make.co to learn more about us. And do tag us on social media, hashtag make together and at maker camp. Um, we'd love to see what you guys are doing and we'd love to know what you would like to see. So thank you again. Have a great one. Very cool. Thanks everybody. I'm gonna um, stop the live stream. I'm gonna stop the live stream here, but if there's anybody on Zoom who wants to hang out and ask any more questions, I'll stay on Zoom, okay? All right. I have a, I have a Thanks question. so much everybody. Bye on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks, Kelsey.